Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks so much for popping in. Lovely to spend a bit of time with you. I'm just going to get myself comfy on my chair. Now, today, I will excuse you. I'm still, you know, excuse me, sorry. I'm still struggling. So if I sound a bit funny, I'll apologise now. Get it out the way. Um, today, I'm coming in. A few of you have got the new Distress Oxide colour, Scorched Timber. And you've asked me to do some videos on it. So I thought we'd have a little catch up today and I'd use this lovely colour. If you don't have this colour, I mean, obviously the design I'm going to do, you can use colours that you've already got. But if you haven't got this colour, it is, it's a lovely brown, but it's almost a sort of charcoal brown. It, it's it's. It's lovely. And I've come up with this design here. And what I've done is I've teamed it up with mustard seed. And what's lovely is we're going to blend these two colours together. And I love the fact that they're almost worlds apart, a yellow and a, a greyy brown. But it's such fun blending them. And I think you get such a lovely effect. Now this I'm going to create, this is on an A6 or a C6 card. I know a lot of you want a few... Um, rectangular designs and, and smaller designs so that's what I'm going for. I've stamped my envelope up as well with my lovely Versafine Claire so that's permanent and I'm going to start with a piece of card and this is Multifairies card and I've got to be honest this is one of my offcuts and I love using offcuts as you know and it's five inches by three inches and as I say, I've got my scorched timber and my mustard seed. And for this, I'm going to be using a couple of our um, little blenders. And the reason I'm using blenders is because I want, and again, don't judge me, don't look at the state. I'm afraid I don't wash my brushes, I don't wash my blenders. For me, if, well, A, I tend not to leave a lot of ink on them. I tend to not over ink to start off with. But also I find if I wash something, um, a, well, it takes me time when I could be crafting, but that's just between us. But also, um, it almost loses the integrity. Um, so I just, for me, find, you know, I don't wash my brushes or my blenders, but I want a lot of colour and I want it on um, sort of quickly. I could use my beautiful brushes and I have got two brushes I'm going to use today. But for me, it will take me longer to build the colour up. So that's the only reason I'm using my blenders. So I'm going to start with the yellow and I am just don't want to put finger marks just in case I've got any dirty fingers and I'm just going to start with the yellow and blend circular motions and again as always I do circular motions on my pad like this. Now my camera is attached on an arm to my table so and I'm afraid when I do blend, I've discovered, especially when I'm demonstrating and I see the table move so much, I am quite vigorous at blending. So if it moves a bit, again, I can only apologise. But you're here with me in my craft room and this is how it goes. So we've got the yellow and I've gone about halfway down look. So I'm going to turn it round, but I'm just going to be mindful. I've got some yellow on my mat there. So I'm just going to move here a little. And I'll come in with this lovely scorched timber now. And as I say, it, it, it's a brown, but quite a charcoal -y brown. And I'm starting at the bit. Now, look how dark that is. Now, you do think, wow, are we going to be able to blend those two together? Well, we shall see. What I tend to do, look, when I ink up, start at the base where you want it a lot darker and keep starting at that base and then only the best tip I can give you here is as you've got less ink because you're using that ink look you're blending as you've got less then slowly move your way up towards the yellow and just bit by bit so if you look, I mean, I'm doing this really slowly and you can see how old my blenders are because I will get odd little bits that come off, but we just ignore those. But if you look, we've almost got deeper colour here and like a marginal bit here. And that's because I've got less on my blender and I'm moving the ink that's there. So again, we won't ink up look 
will pick up because there's income I'm at here. We don't want to waste that. And again, let's move this ink. It's designed to blend. It's designed to move. And one thing I've noticed a lot of crafters do is over ink the blending tools. They would automatically go back and put more ink, but we don't need it. Look, we can move that ink that's there. And to be honest, your ink pad will last longer. I am a bit thrifty. So I'm just going to move that ink. And again, I'm just working on that ink that's there, look. Just moving that up and blending. Just taking my time. And now we can go a little bit further, look. And again, I'm not adding any more ink. I'm just picking that up and blending it up there. I always say you have to work at blending. So if I turn that round, look at that. And you can almost see those stages as we've moved that ink up. So what we'll do now, we'll just come back in, we'll add a little bit more yellow. And just come in at the top, look. And then we'll take that yellow down in to that brown. And that will just do that final blend. I'm taking it right down, look. And I'm just going to give that a bit of a wax to get rid of any little bits. But look at that. And for me, that's blended perfectly. And I love the way you can see that hint of the yellow here, hint of the brown here. So... And then what I'm going to do is just... I'll just clean that up now again. You could, if you wanted, get a piece of card and pop it in there and make yourself a background. But don't tell anyone, I've just cleaned mine up. So we can add some stamping now. And I'm going to use my black, my Nocturne Versafine Claire, but I'm all go also going to bring in a little bit of Golden Meadow just for that background. Now, if I bring in my finished card look, there's just some stamping here and that's in the Golden Meadow. And sometimes I love that background, but it's not too much in your face. And I just think it would be, this would be something missing if it wasn't there. And often, you know, if you look at a finished design and you think, what's missing? It can just be a little bit of almost background stamping. I think if I stamped the black, it would be too far. It would be too near Scout here, but it needs that at that space. So it's just, again, a little thing to think of. So what we'll do first, we'll come in with our beautiful Scout. Now, this is the small one. We have got two sizes and we'll stamp her in black. And again, nice light patting. And I'm just going to turn this round. And I want to sort of about there. Now again, she's a silhouette, so I am going to give the ink time. There's quite a bit of the oxide ink on that card. So I really want this Versafine Claire ink. Just give it time to soak in. Often, especially if you've got a new stamp or you're a little bit nervous, you can lift your stamp up too quickly and it doesn't stamp. And me, I know I just get a better result if I leave the ink and give it time to actually soak in to the card. So if we lift her up, there we go. And she's just absolutely beautiful, look. Now, she needs something to stand on. So I'm going to come in with, on the Forest Moss set, we've got this lovely, lovely little mound that... Now, I may put my head over that, look, she just stands on beautifully. But I have to say, 
Now, Sarah and Annette, we do know we've had this discussion that they are beautiful eyelashes as well, aren't they? <laughs> we won't mention the other thing we said. So look, we've got beautiful eyelashes. <laughs> right, enough of that. That's very silly. So our beautiful mound there. And this is the larger one. There is a smaller one as well. In fact, we could just have maybe at the side we can put a little two more. And even on the, the dark colour look, you can still see them. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a wipe. I'm going to be forever calling that an eyelash now. Now, I want to add some foliage at the top. So I'm going to come in with my beautiful maple leaf. And as I say, this is where I'm going to introduce the lovely golden meadow. And it's so lovely to do tone on tone. I love the effect. So if I bring that in and look at that. And I almost think that has sort of a little bit of almost a grey. And don't be fooled by the ink pad. It looks quite green. It's sort of a greeny yellow. I'll just put on that side. And then I'm just going to give my stamp a bit of a wipe, just with a damp cloth, and then dry it with my Inky Binky, because I want to stamp now using the black. And I love the two colours together. And if you notice, when I stamp the black now, it'll really bring it to the foreground look and knock that to the background. And also, because our main image is in black, it's nice to have some black somewhere else around the design. So I think we'll just, if we ink that leaf and just catch a little bit there, then I think we need a little bit in this corner. So maybe this one. And just catch. Do we, no, stop. I think we'll, we'll call that. I'll just give that a wipe. And then at the base, I'm going to come in with the lovely Bull Rushes stamp. And again, if you're not sure how it's going to look, just get your acetate and have a little bit of a play. But before I do that, I just want to add a little bit more depth. I'm just going to give those a blot. And I want to add a little bit more depth to those mounds that Scout stood on. So I'm going to come in with my black soot and my small, here we go, my number three stencil brush look. And using the lid as the palette, I just want to darken and I lift it up to show you. Just to add a little bit of depth to these mounds and a little bit of shade underneath them and if I bring that closer can you see and it's just little things like this that to me it's those little details so now I can come in with my bull rushes and the same thing I think so it looks nice top and bottom we'll add a couple with our lighter colour and again they won't be that obvious but I think without them it would look like there was something missing. And look, they just slightly show up. I nearly put the wrong lid on the ink pad there. <laughs> so again, I'm just going to give that a wipe. I know I'm going to a darker colour, but I really try not to contaminate my ink pads. So we'll stamp a few with the black. And often, you know, I will take a picture, a photograph at this point and look on my phone so that then when I've stamped the, the bulrushes in black, I love to just look at the difference to see how it looks with the, the two so almost superimposed. So how are you doing? I hope your week started well. Can't believe how we're whizzing through the year. Right, I think... Yeah, I'm going to call that a day. 
think that's enough. I don't want to, to overdo it. And again, we'll give that a little bit of a blot. And then we can add the moon mask to either add a moon or to spotlight our beautiful scout. So I think we'll go for the larger one and just give her a bit of a spotlight. And that one just fits beautifully there. So I'm going to come in with the scorched timber again, but this time with my larger brush. And now this is a new ink pad. So obviously juicy colour. So I'm making sure I blend it in the lid. And also I'm going to start at the bottom and then just gently, gently, because I want this to be quite a smoky effect in the on the yellow, just to keep those lovely tones. Now, there's probably very little there, but I'm going to take it off and have a look. I would rather put it back and deepen it than add too much. So look at that. And, and for me, that's just enough. I don't want it to be too, I, I like that amount. That famous saying, isn't there? You can always add it, but you can't take it away. So I want to add a little bit of colour. So what I'm thinking for her wings, let's come in with the wink of Stella. And I'm just going to add a little bit. Just dot, in fact, some of the yellow. I just need to give that a bit more of a shake. And this is the sparkle yellow. Because on top of that, I'm just going to come in with my Wink of Stella and move that yellow around and add a bit more sparkle. Because I don't want it to be too bright. I just want there to be enough colour there. And it moves beautifully with the Wink of Stella. Next thing, just little finishing touches now. So with my pastel pencil, with the white, I'm just going to add some little highlights and a little bit on scout a little bit on hat shoulder look at that beautiful waist and then and just smudge a little smudging does two things for me i think it looks nicer but also it just seals that pastel pencil and just down her leg and then just on her feet there. And again, you can add a little or as much as you want. Just add a little bit on there, maybe just on that mound there. Just a bit of highlight. And then just, I'm not going on every one, just a little bit of wispy. And if you want, on the sun, depending, or the moon, your highlight, if you want to add... Just on that spotlight there, if we want to add a little bit of the pastel pencil, look at the difference that that makes. And again, you can decide how much you want to add. If you want to add some on the middle of the leaves, look. And again, you can come in with your, your Wink of Stella if you want to add a little bit of sparkle on top of that as well. So what's lovely is you have choices. And then just for the final touch... I know, I'm just going to add just a couple, not too many, look. Just a little bit of white down there. I think that balances it nicely. And then I've got my fan brush and I'm just going to add a little bit of faux bleaching in that background. I don't want too much, just a little bit. In fact, I want, I'm being very specific here. Look at me, I want one there. And what I've got is I've got my piece of kitchen roll, look, well used, so that I don't want it to be too much faux bleach. I don't want it to go back to white. I just want this lovely mottled effect in the background. So as soon as it faux bleaches enough, I'm just going to dry it with my kitchen towel. Does that make sense? Because I don't want it to go back to white. I just want these lovely, almost pale tones. Now... I've also made, um, I thought it would be fun to just create, do the same thing, but do a landscape version. So same piece, it's five by three inches, but all I've done is blended my yellow down, the brown up, and this time I've literally just used the bulrushes and added the smaller moon. 
And again, I think if you've just got that ink pad, what a lovely thing to have a play with. So I'm hoping that gives you a couple of ideas. Let's bring in the original. Now, you know I've run out of room here. So there's our original. There's the one we've just created. Maybe we could put that up there and that one there with a little bit of inspiration for you if you want to make a landscape version. But again, it just shows you if you're one of our new lovely followers and it's lovely that so many of you get in touch. If you only have two Distress Oxides and one, that's just the black, the not turn and one stamp. Now we've got little butterflies, dragonfly you could add. You could add a sentiment. But for me, you can do a lot with just one, just the bulrushes. And great for a man's card. I'm just saying. I'm not going to mention how difficult they can be because I always mention that. And I don't want to upset our male crafters. So if you need a man's card, that would be lovely. Or even, dare I say, if you needed a sympathy card. I know we've done quite a lot of work on, uh, but unfortunately we do need them from time to time. And they are, you know, you're not often in the best frame of mind to make them. So it might be nice just to practice some blending and make a couple of these and have them in just in case. Just saying. But on a brighter note, you could make it just as a, a get well card. I mean, honestly, you have so many options. And I know you clever a lot. I know you're going to come up with so many ideas. I love the way that you just get inspired and create and we share with each other. I'll pop back tomorrow with another version. Maybe I'll just use Scorched Timber. Let's see if we can really put this ink pad through its paces. You take care. Have a lovely evening. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.